Lieutenant Hey You, you who frequencies open, Mr. Checkout, full impulse. It goes faster. I'm the official cat terrifier. Run, kitty, kitty, kitty. So, uh, as far as chairs go, I like this one f for the most part, but one thing I, I'm not overly fond about it is its horn. I'll get close so you can listen. So you can listen. Make sure you hear it uh, nice and good. So it sounds like that, which uh, is pretty good so far as it goes, I guess. It, except if you think about it for a minute, because then you know you recognize immediately you can do this. So uh, they could work on that. Let me put this away before I hurt something break something rather. I'll go full speed. Not mine. But as uh, the chair might indicate, there is a series of, as the title suggests as well, unfortunate incidents I'd like to talk about. Uh, if you have followed my channel for any length of time, I guess you'll know that I'm a very private person, one, so this is an awkward video to make on that score, but two, uh, about a couple of years ago, my grandmother and my best friend were both diagnosed with breast cancer on about the same week, in about the same week, rather, and my last surviving grandparent, my grandmother, uh, died from it after a few months. My best friend, Mindy, by the way, her name is Mindy, for those of you who have been wondering all these years, uh, she beat it. Uh, she had to have a mastectomy, but she did beat it. She recovered from it. It's not her first go around with cancer, but uh, she has so far done well at uh, fighting it off. So there's that. Um, this is Mouth. She's our Siamese cat. I'm the only one who can do this without getting clawed to death and bitten. Isn't that right? Yes, she is. Look cute for the internet. It'll really help. See. Cute. Cat tax. Cute. Okay. Anyway, so, um, I guess a little bit about me. I'm not a big holiday kind of person. Uh, uh, something about the idea of preordained and mandatory fun strikes me as a little bit shady. Uh, but, you know, there's also my military background and my law enforcement background. So on virtually every holiday, except ironically the 4th of July, I have been at a crime scene where someone is dead, or you know whatever it is. Uh, but the Fourth of July has you know rock uh, exploding things in the sky, which isn't particularly my cup of tea. So that's not my thing. But my best friend loves the holidays, even though the Christmas time is a bit sad for her because a few years ago her mother died on December twentieth. Uh, but um, anyway, in early December last year, uh, Mindy was having trouble keeping food down. She was really sick, vomiting, that kind of... I won't go into great details, but uh, I took her to the doctor and they thought it was something viral. And that was about the, I don't know, December 10th or so. And then after about two more weeks, Christmas came around and on Christmas morning, we were opening her gifts and she was still sick, but she was trying to be a real trooper to open it up so it'd be fun for her, you know, everybody was there. And we noticed that her tummy was distended, so we took her well, we took her to the emergency room, and uh, she had to have surgery right away. Uh, they told her that if they don't, if she doesn't have surgery, she's not gonna, she's not likely to uh, survive the, you know, the next day or two. So she had major surgery, had to have what we hope is a temporary colostomy, but it might be permanent. We're gonna find out soon uh, whether or not they can uh, revisit that issue and do away with what is hopefully the temporary colostomy. So that was Christmas Day. Um, and after she had that surgery, you know, she was in the hospital for a few days recovering and they put her in a reha uh, rehab facility. So that way, you know, they had occupational therapists and whatnot to help her, you know, learn how to, here's how you need to navigate your life and deal with this, here's how you take care of it, you know, that kind of stuff. 
and she was going to be there for a little bit of time to learn that, uh, to get some of the strength back because she'd been really weak from having been sick before finding out she needed to have that surgery. And, uh, and then, uh, then in January, uh, we got a call on, the, on a Sunday morning that she'd had a massive stroke. And, uh, she survived it, but you know, the chair is here for a reason. It was a massive stroke. Um, she can't use her left arm virtually at all. Uh, she could not use her left leg at all after the stroke, but with hard work through uh, physical therapy and whatnot, she can move it around. She can bear a little bit of weight on it. She's a real hard worker. She always has been. Uh, she grew up in a family like that. I'll give you an idea. Her mom who is, as I mentioned, uh, now dead, was in her 40s when she had uh, Mindy. But um, her mom had been handicapped all her life. Her knees were fused in the, uh, I don't want to, this is an over-exaggeration, but they were fused, so they were always bent. And so, uh, and so were her ankles, so she had to wear special shoes to get around. She had to do that all of her life. Uh, but when her mom was uh, dying, I would read to her and go visit with her and sit and chat. And she would talk to me about, I, well, I'd press her on this because I wanted to know more about her time during World War II and why it was that in her condition, you know, being that no one would have thought anything about it if she had declined to participate in the workforce uh, during that time. But she stood for 12 to 16 hours a day riveting in a factory uh, to send equipment over to the war. And so I was talking to her about it. I asked, you know, why are you doing this? I mean, it's, you don't need to. I mean, no one would, look, would think about you in any sideways kind of way if you didn't do it. And she goes, what am I going to do, complain about it when, you know, our boys are over there dying? Uh, so that's, that's, just, that's just the kind of family that Mindy comes from. You know, they're really uh, conscientious. They, they believe in, you know, uh, hard work and so she's killing it on the physical therapy and the occupational therapy she's not much of a complainer I'm not saying she never complains I'm saying she's not much of a complainer uh, you know because it doesn't do any good after you finish complaining the problem still needs to be addressed so you might as well you know just cut that out and get to working on the problem she has worked all of her life she was in the women's army corps um, to give you an idea her mom in her 70s, I think it was, decided that she was not being sufficiently productive in the world and useful to it, so she decided to teach her to learn how to braille so she could transcribe books into braille for the blind. And then she decided that still wasn't uh, enough, so she started volunteering to do this morning shift at like a welcoming center kind of thing for into the state. You know, she handed out coffee and directions and maps, that kind of stuff. You know, just something. I might look, you know. You're making people like me who want to sleep in on a Saturday look bad. And so that kind of, uh, you know, Mindy's like, oh God, now I've got to go do this. So Mindy started transcribing into Braille. She's been reading Braille since, a, since she was a kid. She taught herself to read Braille in grade school so that way she could smuggle books home. And after she'd been sent to bed, she could read them in the dark so she didn't need a flashlight like the other kids. Uh, when I was a kid, I always, not always, but I preferred to hang out with adults because it improved the odds that I would learn something. And most of the kids my age just, you know, they were fun to play with, but for substantive conversations, it wasn't there. I didn't know about Mensa kids uh, at the time. Actually, I didn't even know about Mensa until I was about, I guess, 20-ish, something like that. Uh, but, you know, what are you going to do? So I always hung out with adults. Um, so all of my friends, even now, are at least a generation older than I am. Mindy's no exception. She's in her 60s. But anyway... Uh, I'm going to play a video here in a minute of us at the, was at the home, the rehab facility yesterday. She's optimistic about coming home next week. I'm less optimistic, but uh, certainly I think we'll have her home within the next month. She's been away since Christmas Day. Uh, we got her home last week for the afternoon because we had to do a lot of upgrades around the house, put in railings and stuff to help her uh, out. And we had the occupational therap therapist come in for a home visit to you know, yes, this, no, that, uh, you might want to think about this. And insurance will co insurance covers a lot, but there's a lot of out-of-pocket stuff. Um, 
you know, had to build a, a deck and a ramp. That's not... Anyway, it is what it is. Because of the way their bathroom is, they have a tub and a shower. So the shower is just for showers and the tub is just for tubs. But we have, we're going to have to have that rebuilt because we can't use the shower. I mean, we can use the shower, but we can't get her into it safely. So that's off the limit. So the, the bath is going to have to be converted into the shower. And then a hoisting mechanism is going to be put in there to help her get in. So that way she can do it either mostly by herself or, uh, well, mostly by herself. Um, but if not, at least she and her husband can do that with privacy. So that way, you know, she can maintain some mod some modicum of modesty. And you know, Anyway, it's just a whole bunch of stuff that you wouldn't think about. But yeah, uh, I guess we should have taken pictures out there while I'm hammering away building and helping build a deck. I'm completely useless on that, by the way. Just uh, If you ever need help building a deck, I'm not the guy to call. Like uh, I can move the boards around and hammer things, but uh, I'm not mechanically inclined. So anyway, um, there, there's just that. She's made a, a great deal of progress since the stroke. Um, immediately after it, she could barely talk. Her, she didn't have control over her throat muscles. She couldn't swallow. Now her voice is not perfectly back to normal, and her speech patterns are certainly not as uh, fluid as they were. Uh, she used to, after the stroke, she was trying to work out some algebra problems and just could not do the linear thinking to get from step A to B. She, too, is a mincin. And so this was really disturbing to her because she's, you know, bright enough to recognize that she's lost some mental faculty. Uh, even though, although she's regained, she's been working logic puzzles like, like a, a boss to try to get it back. But anyway, um, a few years ago I did a video where it was on gun control actually and I'd mentioned that there was a, that violent crime had been taken off the list of the top 15 killers of Americans and that it had been replaced with something called pneumocystis. Uh, or pneumonitis, I think it was. And people who have had a stroke are at a great risk for that. And I mentioned, I mean, what is this d disease that is, uh, you know, ravishing, uh, ravishing the population that has replaced violent crime? And it is a lung infection that, that's incident to inhaling pet, pet dander or uh, small bits of drink or food. So they have to, like, they had to, they don't have to anymore. They had to thicken all of her drinks so she could have something to drink. So it was essentially like she was chewing the water. Uh, to avoid that kind of thing, but she's off that. She, I mean, she has made a great deal of, of progress considering how severe the stroke was and the fact that, as I mentioned, it's taken some of her vision. Which, uh, I mentioned her mom and the brailing thing. When her mom picked up brailing, Mindy decided that in addition to brailing, she needed to do other things, so she decided to go learn how to be a sighted guide and then to teach classes on that uh, to help people whose family members had gone blind or whatever. And there's part of the training program where you have to wear a blindfold for some, I think it's like a week or whatever, and you have to get around for the final exam with your blindfold on, you can't take it off for any reason or you fail. And so she's got her blindfold on, and she's actually leading real life blind people, and they're crossing this intersection, and she's got the cane, and it goes a little bit wild and gets stuck in the grill of somebody's car. <laughs> and you can't take off the blindfold for any particular reason. So she's having to like feel around in the guy's radiator and he's getting all pissed and the blind people are getting nervous because he's like, I gotta run you over. And so, it's, you know, it's that kind of thing. Uh, but anyway, so the blindness, the partial blindness thing we're working around. Uh, so hopefully we can get her in this, hopefully one day walking again, because as I mentioned, her left leg can take a little bit of weight, but she's still real unsteady when she, she requires a lot of assistance to get up. And, you know, it requires a lot of modifications around the house. We're gonna have to buy a car. Uh, that can accommodate all the stuff we have to take around with, with her until perhaps for the rest of her life, I don't know. Anyway, so this is a fundraiser video in case you haven't caught on, hence the cute kitty for the internet tax to, to really help out. You know, hey other kitty, this is Ginger, the careful cat who actually used to live with raccoons. She was a feral who's come to live with us. She's real friendly now. She didn't talk to me for 10 years because I had to take her, we had to take her to the vet and when I say we had to take her to the vet, that means I had to pick her up and throw her in the cat carrier. And she didn't talk to me for like 10 years after that. Every time I got near, she'd run away. I'm babbling now. Awkward conversation. Anyway, so if you have anything spare lying around, please send it. Uh, I have a link here. It's for Eminem, Mike and Mindy. And her mom's name starts with M too. I used to refer to them as Eminem and M uh, to help them primarily defray the costs. I treat... 
uh, anyway, uh, I, I treat part of the YouTube stuff that I make on like Patreon and whatnot is essentially like a beer fund, even though I don't drink, so it's just disposable stuff and it goes to my big luxury item, which is coffee. Uh, I, I'm not big on buying extravagances, but I, I do like my coffee. Uh, I, I don't tend to waste much money, but it, everything that goes into the, on that is just going to go straight to them, so that way they can help defray their cost covering the out-of-pocket stuff, and, you know, in addition to my extra income that comes in through the various things that I do in the world. So. Don't put yourself out for it or anything, but if you do have something extra to send, uh, it will be put to good use and greatly appreciated. And with that, I will shut up and uh, splice in that video, so thank you. Have a fantastic day. And I'm, I'm just going to sit here, because yes. that's what I do. You, you do. Hi, like y'all. I'm like a potted plant. Yeah. So, uh, as I mentioned, in a video I haven't done yet, but like when I edit this together, yes, it's the magic of, of editing. Hi, y'all. So uh, as I mentioned in the video, uh, here is my best friend Mindy, my best friend of twenty, you know, twenty-three, twenty-four years. Yeah, uh, twenty-some odd number of years. And um, so, as I have mentioned, uh, she's had a very bad year. Um, so she beat the cancer thing, and then around Christmas, actually before Christmas, she got a little bit sick, and then on Christmas we had to take her to the emergency room, and they took her to surgery. And so she had to have major surgery, and she was recovering from that in a facility for temporary transition and rehab, and then she had a massive stroke. And so that's how we got to be where we are today. Let me have some cake on you. Oh, thank you. Cake by the ocean. <laughs> It's a song. It, you wouldn't like it. I lost my, my coffee. It's over there. I can't. I can't get over there. <laughs> <coughs> so there's your coffee. Thank you. <clears throat> so I'm sitting on this side, so the other side, so that way she can see me because the stroke has left her blind from about here over. Anyway, so. Uh, that's what's been going on with me and my life. Mindy here, who is recovering as about as well as you can expect after a massive stroke. I've been really lucky. I can move my foot. <clears throat> and so they got me a wheelchair that I can control with only one arm. Most wheelchairs, and I did not know this, um, if you want to turn, you have to use your non-dominant arm. Just for regular moving around you, you use your right arm or your dominant arm. And I don't have an option on that. So I could use my wheelchair but only to go straight. I couldn't turn corners at all. I have spent a lot of time being stuck places here in the facility. Somebody would have to come get me and get me headed the other direction. So they got me a wheelchair that was designed for people with only one arm. And I played around with it for about an hour this morning and I'm doing pretty well with it. And it looks like I may be going home first to the middle part of next week. And they've done remarkable things at the house so that I can get around in there. They put uh, bars up in the bathroom so that I can pull myself up on onto the toilet and can get off and stabilize if I when I'm done. I'm trying to work up where I can get a walker. We're not not ready for that yet because I don't have enough use of my left arm. So I would not be balanced on a walker. You should come play with me sometime when we're down with the, ball. With, the with the various things on there. We were playing with balloons today. If I were there I'd be making balloon animals. I'd be like, and this is a retarded snake. <laughs> That's just me. I'm not very talented. Yeah, but the uh, the wheelchair that is um, she's talking about has like it doesn't really have a transmission, which is good because she can't drive a stick. She never could. She needs an automatic, but it goes forward, reverse, and it's a pump kind of thing. It's very fancy, so she can terrorize the cats when she gets home. All right, so I just wanted to do a quick video to attach to the or edit into the uh, main video, just so you guys can see what's up. Anyway, uh, thank you. Uh, have a fantastic day.